you asked, I listened. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to upregulate every new neurotransmitter system in your brain, as well as this is an oversimplification. Please forgive my pronunciation. And I just wanna make this information public, and that is my motivation with this video. So without further ado, the first one we're going to talk about is Alcar, Asa L-carnitine, which you've heard me talk about a lot on this channel. It's an amino acid that upregulates the dopamine D1 receptor, as well as increasing NGF. It also has other benefits like increasing mitochondria energy, increasing acetylcholine. Next is bromiantine, which is a drug that ends up upregulating dopamine by upregulating tyrosine hydroxylase, which just increases our brain's natural production of dopamine. It upregulates GABA as well. Salbutamine is a synthetic version of vitamin B1 that upregulates dopamine D1 and D2 receptors as well as increasing energy and mitochondria function. Next is Insitol, which is vitamin B8. In large doses, around 6 to 18 grams, it can upregulate dopamine and serotonin. Cordyceps is a mushroom that upregulates the enzyme tyrosine hydroxylase as well as it having benefits for endurance, mood, and cognition. Borescolin is the primary bioactive component of a herb which slightly upregulates dopamine via via increasing the camp levels. Uridine is something that's found naturally in our bodies and beer, surprisingly enough, yet in very small amounts. When you're supplementing it, it has the ability to upregulate dopamine D2 receptors as well as modulating dopamine, so it's really good for reducing addictive behaviors. CDP choline has been shown to have the ability to upregulate dopamine D2 receptors after months of continuous use, as well as increasing acetylcholine. Phenylparacetam at small doses, around 100 milligrams of Appears to have the ability to upregulate dopamine D1, D2, and D3 receptors in the brain. Vitamin C, which I'm sure we're all aware of after these last couple of years of a certain virus going on, has the ability to upregulate tyrosine hydroxylase, protect dopamine neurons, and is a cofactor for many dopamine processes. Caffeine, coffee, which we all love, <laughs> upregulates the expression of dopamine D2 and D3 receptors. Creatine activates the dopamine D1 and D2 receptors. It helps increase dopamine transit mission long term by upregulating NMDA receptors. Another new tropic that upregulates dopamine is tianeptine, which is an atypical antidepressant that affects primarily the opiate system. It upregulates the dopamine D2 and D3 receptor, except we have to exercise great caution with this nootropic because there are some horror stories of terrible withdrawals because it is very addictive. Another nootropic is 9-MeBC. This is a nootropic that's talked about a lot for upregulating the dopamine system. I would exercise great caution with this nootropic because I believe it hasn't been proven in studies to upregulate dopamine. I believe it is very hazardous and it can be very very hazardous. The majority of its effects are mainly attributed to its mal actions, the monoamine oxidase inhibiting actions of it. Lacks efficacy and is very risky in my opinion. A sample upregulation stack you can do is taking Alcar, Cordyceps, B vitamins, Forscolin, Artichoke extract, and vitamin C in the morning, taking fish oil midday, and then taking uridine monophosphate at night. GABA is a major inhibitory neurotransmitter responsible for the calming of the central nervous system. It has an inverse relationship with glutamate, the major excitatory neurotransmitter. You know when you've been drinking a few beers and you feel that nice buzz? That is from GABA. You're feeling the effects of GABA because alcohol affects the GABA-A receptor responsible for those good mood effects. So there's two primary GABA receptors that we're going to talk about today. There's the GABA-A receptor, which is responsible for sedation, relaxation, reduced anxiety, it impairs short-term memory, and usually takes longer and is harder to upregulate. Then there's the GABA-B receptors, which results in reducing stress, reducing depression, reducing muscle tension. They're usually easier and quicker to upregulate. So just a disclaimer as well, this is an oversimplification of the GABA system. So the first new tropic is CAVA, which is a herb from Fiji that has very similar effects to alcohol and marijuana for its disinhibition and recreational effects. It upregulates the GABA-A receptors with long-term use, as well as increases dopamine, norepinephrine, and is neuroprotective towards the brain. The Coba Moneri is an aviandic herb that has been used for centuries. It upregulates the GABA-A receptors and subunits. It is also a powerful memory enhancer and strong enzylitic. Afobazole is a Russian enzylitic from the benzodiazepine family that is prescribed for anxiety. In Russia, it upregulates the GABA-A receptors and also has other benefits like impacting BDNF, NGF, and sigma-1 receptors. Flumazanel is a medication that is used to help reverse benzodiazepine overdoses. It antagonizes the GABA-A benzodiazepine receptor, so it blocks those receptors and therefore by 
homeostasis upregulates them. Homeostasis is the body's action to keep balance. Too little of something will result in the body producing more of another thing to keep balance in the body. This medication has been shown to upregulate GABA A receptors in as little as a week. Very powerful. You could also make the argument with other GABA antagonists like ginkgo biloba, subroxydehydromyoricetin. Because they antagonize GABA, they could also help upregulate GABA because of the homeostasis effect. Fascio Rastam is an enzylitic Rastam that is used to relax and enhance cognition. It upregulates the GABA B receptors and is also useful for the treatment of ADHD. Emoxypine is a synthetic nootropic compound that is similar chemical structure to vitamin B6. It upregulates the GABA B receptors and increases the ability of GABA to bind to these receptors. It also positively impacts dopamine, acetylcholine, and increases blood flow to the brain. Homoterine is an amino acid found in seaweed that is the exact same chemical structure as taurine except with an extra carbon group so it affects the body very differently. So because of this, it antagonizes the GABA B receptor, reduces the action of that receptor temporarily so that it upregulates long term due to homeostasis. It also has strong evidence for increasing memory. Bromutane is a stimulant and an enzylitic mixed into one. It's very useful for productivity, mood, and confidence. It increases GABA mediation because it reduces gene expression, so it increases GABA long term. It also has the benefits for upregulating dopamine as well. I personally find this very effective for upregulating GABA for me where I can really feel its effects. Another nootropic that upregulates the GABA system is Mongolia bark, which is a very interesting nootropic because it affects a lot of different systems and it has the ability to upregulate the GABA A receptors. Black seed oil is another nootropic that has positive effects for the GABA system. It inhibits this system, which can help restore the functioning of the GABA system when it is dysfunctional. Something to keep in mind. Apigenin upregulates glutamate decarbolase, which is the enzyme that converts glutamate to GABA. Apigenin is a very popular nootropic that has a lot of very good benefits and something I would really recommend to look into. A sample upregulation stack you could do would be in the morning taking emoxypine, then in the evening taking black seed oil, bacopa or cava, plus taking magnolia bark. Acetylcholine is the major excitatory neurotransmitter of our body. It is called the learning transmitter because of its effects for memory, focus, for motor movements, for arousal, sleep, and inflammation. It is categorized into two receptor types, the nicotinic receptor and the muscarinic receptor. Nicotinic receptors are named after nicotine, as you might have guessed, and it is two different receptors, the N1 and the N2, and they're mainly excitatory receptors. The muscarinic receptor is named after muscarin and has five different receptors. M1, 2, 5 are excitatory, where M3 and 4 are inhibitory, similar to dopamine, where it has excitatory and inhibitory effects with its different receptors. Just as a disclaimer, increasing acetylcholine might not be something you want because there is a thing deemed cholinergic depression where it's too much acetylcholine can suppress the release of other neurotransmitters, causing depression, causing fatigue, causing cognitive malaise, causing all these bad things, so just something to keep in mind. Paracetam, the original Rastam created in the 1960s, this upregulates the muscarinic cholinergic receptor as well as upregulating pr production of acetylcholine. This is a common study aid for good reason and also powerfully increases cerebral blood flow in the brain. Paramaracetam deemed the study racetam unofficially. This upregulates the activity of the HCAU system, the high choline affinity uptake system. By stimulating this system, it indirectly upregulates acetylcholine for a couple of days after use. And it's also very good for long-term potentiation, memory consolidation, and memory formation. Photophosphoserine is an important part of the cellular membrane found already in our bodies. It's commonly used as a study aid and is actually known to fight cognitive decline. It downregulates production of acetylcholinesterase, the enzyme that breaks down acetylcholine, increasing the amount of acetylcholine that is available long term. Ginkgo biloba, the popular herb used for cognition, general health. It upregulates the M1 muscarinic receptor with consistent use as well it's very good for increasing cerebral blood flow like paracetam. Alpha lipoic acid, powerful antioxidant. This upregulates the M1 and M2 muscarinic receptors. It's also really good for promoting cellular energy and is very synergistic with Alcar. Magnolia bark, like I mentioned before, it's a very interesting and very unique nootropic. The two core compounds, magnolio and honicolo, upregulate the acetylcholine muscarinic receptor M1 and M2. Nephora Racetam, the less known racetam. This upregulates the muscarinic receptors. It also increases GABA, which is pretty unique for a racetam. Galantamine 
is a very powerful plant alkaloid. It upregulates the muscarinic receptors as well as also acting as a PAM at the nicotinic receptors, positive allosteric modulator. It is also a powerful acetylcholinesterase inhibitor. Coffee, chronic intake of coffee upregulates many different neurotransmitter systems. It ends up upregulating the muscarinic and nicotinic receptors quite significantly. This is kind of surprising to me. It's also surprising that coffee upregulates dopamine. It's a bit weird. Other ways to upregulate acetylcholine is activating the TRKB receptors, which is what BDNF activates. So BDNF stimulation will upregulate the muscarinic acetylcholine receptors as well as modulating nicotinic receptors. Some new tropics that do this are Polygala, which upregulates BDNF and NGF, and 7DHF, which acts as a BDNF mimic. A simple upregulation stack that you can do is Ginkgo biloba, alpha-loperic acid with CDP choline, 7-8-DHF, with coffee, with photophosphocerine. During the night, magnolia bark and polygala. Serotonin, this is a major inhibitory neurotransmitter. It puts you in a state of contentment. It's called the master neurotransmitter because it affects so many different areas like mood, sleep, relaxation, digestion, libido, and focus. I would not necessarily recommend upregulating serotonin because it can have numerous side effects, which is what you see from SSRIs, where it's an overabundance of serotonin can cause some undesirable effects. There are different serotonin receptors with some of them functioning as excitatory and inhibitory. They range from from 5-HT1 to 5-HT7. Most of the nootropics upregulate the 5-HT2 receptor. Incetol, vitamin B8, which is a pseudo vitamin, it's more of a sugar. High doses of incetol has been shown to upregulate the 5-HT2 receptor, as well as upregulating dopamine. St. John's wort, a popular herb for dealing with depression, it downregulates adrenic receptors and it upregulates the 5-HT2 receptors. Use this nootropic with extreme caution because it can interrupt with a lot of different systems. Another pathway for upregulating serotonin by using cannabinoid agonists, so CB1, CB2 agonists. Beta cardiophelaline is a compound found in small amounts in black pepper that it is a non-selective CB2 agonist so it can help upregulate the 5-HT2A receptor. THC, one of the active compounds found in that very popular aforementioned herb, <laughs> can upregulate the serotonin 5-HT2A receptors by acting as a cannabinoid agonist. Obviously, THC has numerous downsides. But copa, this is a very popular memory boosting her for good reason. It has a lot of good benefits for upregulating serotonin by increasing tryptophan hydroxylase and by increasing CERT serotonin transporter expression. It can also upregulate GABA and has other beneficial effects. Other ways to increase CERT serotonin transporter expression, they always say a lot of serotonin is produced in the gut, which science is backed up. And so it's been shown that a lot of various probiotics and prebiotics upregulate CERT. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce these names except I'll list them right now. <laughs> Clonazepam, which is a benzodiazepine, upregulates serotonin receptors 5-HT1 and 5-HT2. A sample stack that you could do would be prebiotics, beta cardiophilaline, incetol, and then at night take bacopa. The final neurotransmitter is glutamate. Glutamate, you don't want to upregulate it because increasing glutamate too much can cause excitotoxicity where it's basically like overstimulation. Other receptors can cause them to be destroyed or damaged. It's not something you want, except we can impact and upregulate some glutamate subtypes like the AMPA and NMDA receptors to good nootropic effect. They're both involved in memory, learning, and overall cognition. AMPA receptors are particularly good for memory formation and consolidation. This is primarily what the classic racetams impact, like paracetam, like oxyracetam, like aniracetam. Aniracetam, the social enzylitic of aracetam, upregulates the AMPA receptor sites with continuous use, as well as improving dopamine, serotonin, acetylcholine release. Panax ginseng, commonly used herb for a multitude of reasons. The sapien content in it upregulates APA receptors through a related pathway. It's also beneficial for increasing serotonin, dopamine, and resveratrol, the longevity molecule found in all of your favorite wines. Mr. David Sinclair always talks about it. This upregulates the APA receptors through an AMPK pathway. It also has good effects for dopamine production and long-term potentiation. Ketamine, the controversial drug, this upregulates APA receptors by reducing NLRP3 inflammasome. 
It also appears that ketamine is also very good for getting past trauma. Antidepressants like SSRIs and BDNF also have some action for upregulating APA receptors. NMDA receptors, magnesium L3 and 8, the more bioavailable form of magnesium, proven in clinical trials to boost cognition, upregulates the NMDA receptors. This is the only thing that I could find that upregulates NMDA receptors. If you know anything, please let me know. I'd love to add it to the list and update this video. That is all I could find, and that is all for this video. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Stay tuned for more content. Join our Facebook group, connect with people that are interested in nootropics like yourself. And that is everything today, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one.